That was all real. So it's like yeah. she came in and did the scene, and then somebody else came in and just had their arms yeah. out. But I got—I actually was off camera on the reverse for oh, that. I watched too, it up. Huh? It was, was it cool? wild. It was really cool. It was scary yeah. though, because she had to like pull it off. She just had to pull the jacket off at the end, and one time her hair got on fire. I don't want to hurt anyone, but it feels kind of good. This is the second time that we've seen an adaptation after the 1984 film, which is a very faithful adaptation of the book. Yes. And I'm curious if that was something that you had in mind and you think maybe gave you actually some license to change some things just because you already had that version of the movie. Yeah, and that's definitely a, something that anytime it's come up or talked about, that's kind of exactly what I say is, uh, you know, we've got the book and the book is that, you know, that text from which everything is drawn from. And we have that 1984 version, which is right, beat for beat, very similar to the way that the, the story unfolds. And there's a great Blu-ray of it out there. And, uh, you know, it's you, you can watch it any time and it exists. So, yes, it did give us some liberty to say, OK, that did an excellent job of telling the story. Maybe we can do something a little bit different in terms of getting to some of the themes that are in the book that I don't think were as fully explored in that original version. It, it, so, so yes, it was it was liberating to be able to say, okay, I'm going to give you something a little bit different. It's a remix, right? It's a it's a different a different take on this for mm. now uh, versus that one. But I like that they both exist. Um, I had I had seen the original Firestarter long time ago. And um, I think the iconic image of Drew Barrymore stuck with me. And, you know, other than that, I didn't dive back into the old material too much. Uh, I think that I knew that there was a wonderful, wonderful arc in that this family is trying to sort of uh, protect their daughter who has these pyrokinetic abilities and, and sort of keep her from these government forces that might want to utilize her for, you know, turn her into a weapon of some sort. And um, that world that Stephen King created is so brilliant and fascinating it really really drew me in and um that was the exciting part was yeah. that world <laughs> yeah charlie if they catch her they're gonna put her in a cage charlie Talk a bit about the effects. I mean, for starters, with you, Ryan, uh, obviously there are so many fire effects, but one specific that I wanted to talk about is the scene where your arms are literally set on fire. For starters, is that practical? Is that real? Uh, that was not me. That was not, um, okay. <laughs> it, it wasn't me. Um, honestly, that would be very cool, but it wasn't me. I had actually seen um, a stunt uh, beforehand. The stunt people like put their arm in like this gel and then they could actually light it on fire. So I'm not 100% sure if they did like something very similar to that, but I know that was used uh, in a little bit of the movie. That was all That was all real. So it's like yeah. she came in and did the scene and then somebody else came in and just had their arms yeah. out. But I, got, I actually was off camera on the reverse for oh, that. I watched too, it up. It was, was it cool? wild. It was really cool. It was scary yeah. though, because she had to like pull it off. She just had to pull the jacket off at the end and one time her hair got on fire. <laughs> it was crazy. Well, I mean, I did want to ask because I mean, fire is unpredictable and very dangerous. Like what was it yeah. like? What was kind of the atmosphere on set when you were doing quote unquote fire days? Progressively through the shoot, more and more firemen started hanging out on set. Oh and eventually God. we just had fire trucks in the stage with us. But yeah, it was, we got to know the fire department really well. On this movie. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there's there's a lot of fire. It did feel very safe on set. And I think everyone did an amazing job of doing that for us. I'm not special, I'm a monster. Vicky has a much uh, more prominent presence in yeah. this version of it. But also, I mean, there are things like her powers are different and they mm -hmm. also have some psychic abilities even before the Lot 6 experiment. Uh, right. Can you talk about that evolution? Yeah, some of that stuff. So it was in the script uh, when I first read it and some of that stuff we explored even more and kind of built up. There are hints in the novel that the Lot 6 experiment is actually unlocking what previously exists. And there were definitely, I, I wanted to obviously show with Andy how the push works and what it does. And then with Vicky, because they have different arguments on how they're raising Charlie, it, for her, it was much more, you know, how does she handle this ability without using it? Like, you know, how do you, how do you not use it and live a normal life? Um, whereas Andy's relying on it for most of it. And so their abilities, I was hoping for something subtle and believable 
once you get into these psychic powers, once you can do telekinetic stuff, or you can do pyrokinetics, or you can push people, it, it could easily go into superhero world, which we've seen, and which I think a lot of superhero comics in particular have borrowed a lot from Firestarter uh, through the 80s and 90s. And we've seen that, we've seen all those. So for me, it was about how do you ground this stuff in a way that feels more believable in a kind of scientific way, but also in an emotional way, like have ramifications for using abilities. I love the John Carpenter score in this. I think it is just phenomenal. And it's also a just a great Easter egg for those who know that John Carpenter was originally going to uh, direct an adaptation of Firestarter. Yeah. I'm curious just how much you had the chance to talk with him about his original vision and your vision. You know, it was an interesting, I, I, when the conversation began and when it seemed clear that Carpenter would come on, I had spoken a lot with my director of photography, Kareem, about, you know, should we bring up the Firestarter thing? Like, because I was wondering, honestly, <laughs> is it possible that he had score that he had planned? But once we got into conversation, it never came up. We never brought it up <laughs> uh, <laughs> because, you know, John's all about getting down to business. He's a straight shooter, like, let's do this. And he was excited enough about diving in and doing something um, that he felt, uh, you know, that he hasn't really done before in that, you know, almost all the scores he's done are either for his movies or related to his movies. So this was something new and different. And it was a kind of a breath of fresh air in a way in that John was like, I'm divorced from this. I'm just doing it. But the experience itself was, you know, it was a dream come true, really, because if you had told me 10 years ago that I'd be on Zoom calls with John and Cody and Daniel, watching them watch my movie and then having John turn around in his chair and look at me and be like, Keith, what do you, what do you think? Uh, what am I, you know, it was like, I, I felt like I was going to catch fire uh, just, just having those conversations. And uh, Ryan, this is actually your second Stephen King adaptation. You previously had quite a uh, fascinating showdown with Pennywise in it chapter two. If Charlie were to face off against Pennywise, who would win in your opinion? Oh, oh, that that's a cool question. Okay, uh, I love that. Who? Okay, let's see. I think Charlie. Would have I feel like Charlie, maybe. Yeah, I yeah. think Charlie definitely. Charlie would be like, okay, right away. She would send something. Something's off. He's lying about something. Maybe not about a birthmark on the cheek. Um, but yeah, I think I think Charlie would win. She would yeah. just look at me. Uh, you're done. <laughs> I don't think anyone. Pennywise's worst enemy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>